Hi friends, good morning. I have provided the techno function payment business analyst training for student and working professional. It's three month duration course. In case you would like to join the course, please approach for me Tamil Business Tech News at the rate of gmail.com. In this video, let's be talk about payment engine process and validation. The bank should be process millions of trillions of transaction day by day seamlessly via payment engine. The payment engine do for all the validations. It's great for the minimum manual intervention and reduce the operation cost and increase the increasing the cost of the payment. The below type of payment should be processed via payment engine. Let's we look on this description each and every payment type. Invert payment. The beneficiary holding the account in your bank. The payment should be initiated for the other bank. Take down this example. Ragul is a beneficiary. Ragul holds the account in your bank, City Bank. The Vino is a SBI India customer. He initiated the transaction. So Ragul account credit should be happen. These kind of transaction we called as a invert payment transaction. Vino need to send 15k ID to Ragul. The SBI India and the City Bank UAE both the bank have a direct relationship. So what they happen? We know initiate the transaction, the amount should be created for the Ragul account. This payment we called as a invert payment respective of Ragul and the city bank. Outward payment, your bank should be originate the transaction, some other bank credit should be happen. That payment we called as a outward payment. In this scenario, we know on the SB India, both the parties is the outward payment initiation party. Because we know initiate the transaction via SB India, it's moved to that city bank after it's reached out for the Ragul account. Same like that, in this scenario, we know the SB Bank is a outward payment initiating parties because the amount debit should be happen for we know account. So this we called as outward payment. Same bank transaction, debtor and creditor, both the person holding the account in same bank, on the time the internal suspense account debit and credit should be happen. We know holding the account in SB India, Ragul also holding the account in SB India, we know need to send 10 lakh Again, to Ragul account. In this scenario, Vino is originating the payment. His account, the Vino account debit should be happen. After the fund should be processed to that Ragul account, the Ragul account credit should be happen. The SB India internal suspense account debit and credit should be happen. The correspondent and intermediary bank actions. The uh, originating bank and the beneficiary bank, they both the bank don't have a direct relationship. On the time, the correspondent bank should be involved. The correspondent bank should be processed the transaction. Take down the example, we now holding the account in SB India. He need to send the money to Ragul from UAE City Bank customer. In this scenario, SB India and Ragul Bank, City Bank, UAE, both the bank don't have a direct relationship. So, so the reason the ICC Bank India and the FAB UAE, both the correspondent should be involved. The correspondent bank should be push the transaction to originating bank to Beneficiary bank process flow of payment engine and validation. Just look on this diagram. I provide this for the outward payment diagram. Outward payment means your bank should be initiate the transaction, some other bank credit should be happen. The originator from your bank, beneficiary from other bank. That is a simple example. The payment should be initiated for the external channel or internal channel or bulk channel. Okay. Um, Bulk channel means host to host, test to be connected, many channels is there. Internal channel, net banking, online portal, everything. Is. Once the payment should be initiated, after it's go for the payment engine. The payment engine do for that payment segregation, transaction check, account status check, and fund availability, checking, risk checking, future date transaction, regulation law, FX deal booking, routing, booking, payment generation, duplicate check, repair queue, maker and checker queue. This all the checking should be happen for the payment engine. After it's move for the clearing, clearing should be connected for the core banking application. Core banking, it should be connected for the settlement. Settlement finally reach out for the beneficiary side. This is the simple payment engine process flow of outward payment. What are the validation? As I mentioned from this diagram for the payment engine, below validation should be explained in detailed manner in step by step. What is the use of payment engine? The payment engine should be increase the state though process and reduce the human intervention and also reduce the operation cost. The payment should be flow was, the payment flow should be happen for the high accuracy and very fast. That is the major advantage of the payment engine. First step is a payment segregation. The inward message or inward message or outward message. Okay, what are the messages there? Okay, the payment segregation should be happen for the first step. What type of payment, whether it's a OTGS or NEFT, ACH or TT or BT or loan or check, what kind of payment that segregation should be happen first. 
Take the example, if you do the transaction from India above 2 lakhs, the transaction should be moved for that NEFT to OTGS line automatically. That's be called as a <coughs> payment segregation. Next step is a 2 is a transaction check. Any country should be block, block listed for US impose or OFAC transaction or any other transaction. Okay, that country cannot able to make the transaction of cross border payment because it should be stopped. Suppose US impose or OFAC imp transaction or any other country transaction should be put for the particular country. That country cannot able to make any kind of cross border transaction. Nowadays, the AML validation should be happen for automatically because your core banking should be connect directly connected to the AML system. The validation should be happen for automatically. The payment agent can able to easily connect for the external system, whether they can able to connect for the microservices or API or any kind of interfaces. Okay, the connection should be happen. Third step is a account status checking and fund availability. Whenever if you do the transaction, the debit and credit account status need to be checked at first, whether the account is an open account or closed account or dormant account. Open account means the transaction can able to process the transaction. Closed account means within a one year, more than a one year, the transaction never happened for the particular account. That account we called as a closed account. Dormant account means within a one year, the transaction should not be happened for the particular account. That account we called as a dormant account. So suppose you, you if you do any kind of debit debit action, okay, in this particular account, they don't have a sufficient balance, that transaction should be truncated or rejected. Fourth step is a risk checking. You need to check for the customer risk level, whether it's a customer, is a high risk customer, low risk customer, or medium risk customer. Fifth is a future date transaction. Whenever if you do the transaction, the transaction is a future data transaction. You need to move the transaction for that future data queue. Future data queue. Regulation draw. You need to follow for the country regulation and all the uh, payment guidelines for the particular country whenever you initiate the transaction. FX deal booking. Suppose if you initiate the transaction from this one country to another country, you need to call for the FX system and you need to book the deal. Routing. Eight step is a routing. The payment should be route for that one one process to another process. Even the payment should be route to that one party to another party. This is this is all the essential step because you need to route the payment to that originator customer to beneficiary customer. Booking. Booking means nothing is that the ledger entry should be happen for the core banking system. Payment generation. Payment generation means whenever you initiate the transaction, finally you need to generate for the account statement. Based on the account statement, the account validation and the transaction validation, everything should be happen. Eleventh is a duplicate check. Whenever the transaction is initiated for the twice, that need to be moved for the duplicate check process and the duplicate transaction need to be removed. Twelfth is a repair queue. Any kind of technical failure or any kind of payment validation failure, that should be moved for the repair queue. After the bank front officer should be look on the transaction and validate the transaction, either the transaction should be pushed for the next process, otherwise the, the transaction should be rejected according to the conditions. Maker and checker concept. The SSA need to be set for the one application. Uh, the maker should be set up for the SSI. The checker should be validated the SSI and approve the SSI instruction. It's moved for the payment process. Below, I will give for the different kind of payment engine. GBP is a Fenestra, OPF is a FIS, Burners is a Stesius, TPH is a Teminus, Wallpay is a Volantai, EPP is a FISAV, SEP is a Standard Chartered Bank. These are the example payment engines. Thanks for watching this video. Kindly subscribe my channel and provide your support.